Hi everyone, this is Mr. Gunnell. I'm a science teacher at the high school and the point of this video is to give you a quick overview of some of the settings and features in Zoom that will be useful as we get started this school year. You'll notice on the left that I have an agenda for the video, so if you feel really comfortable with one of those features, feel free to skip ahead. And then in the middle of the screen you'll see my Zoom app is open. Now, a lot of times you might enter a Zoom meeting through a link provided to you from your teacher, or you can enter directly from the app and a lot of times what's going to happen is that your Zoom teacher or your teacher will give you a specific meeting ID. That's the way most of us plan on using Zoom this year is always through a personal meeting room. So that number won't, uh, won't change throughout the year. Now, this is the meeting ID for uh, another account that I have. So I've set that up so that I can enter. That meeting's already running. So I'm going to go ahead and join. And a lot of the meetings won't actually have a password. This one happens to. So even if there is a password, you'll still have to wait in the waiting room until you're allowed in by your teacher. And so I'll go ahead and admit that from the other device. And I'll go ahead and join with my computer audio. You can also check this box so it doesn't ask you every time. You can just go ahead and enter right into the meeting. Now I have my computer set up so that it's muted and the video is turned off right as soon as I'm starting. So I can go ahead and unmute and start the video as I'm getting ready to join. Now I'll turn on gallery view so we can see myself and my other myself in the, in the video. So we've already talked about entering a meeting. Now some of the auto, audio, audio settings that you'll need to look at uh, really are all down here by the mute button. So of course you can click to turn the mute or on or off. You can also do the same thing for video. Now another way to mute or unmute yourself is to use a keyboard shortcut. So if you hold your mouse over the mute button, you'll see that I can mute my audio by using that shortcut in parentheses. So on a Mac, it's Command Shift A for audio, and I can use that same shortcut to turn it off. Now another thing you could do, and really a suggestion that we'd all have, is that you leave yourself muted for any class that you're in. And then if you ever want to talk, all you have to do is just hold down the space bar. And while you're holding the space bar, it'll unmute you until you release the space bar. And then as soon as you release it, it'll go back to being muted. So it's really like a push to talk kind of thing. And it will allow you to talk only while you're holding the space bar. And that'll prevent some of the feedback issues that you could have on a Zoom. Now, one of the other issues that you can have with sound is if you know that you're unmuted and your teacher's unmuted, but you still can't quite hear something, is that your sound might just be going through the wrong speaker. So if you press this up arrow right next to unmute, you see that there is a few different options for a microphone and there are also a few different options for your speaker. So I might just, if I can't hear anything, have it going through the wrong location. I might have headphones plugged into my computer and it's going through them even though I'm not wearing them. And so you always want to be careful about where it's going. I could choose to go directly through my computer speakers uh, or go back to the ones that I had as default. So if you are having sound issues, that's one place to check. There are also some video settings. Again, we talked about turning your video on or off, and some of the other settings in your video. You can just go to video settings there. And the first thing you might want to look at is turning on or off HD video. If you're having some internet connection issues, you might want to turn this off. That'll allow you to have a uh, better streaming option, and so you might not get as much lag if you turn off the HD feature. Now you can also mirror your video, which just flips you left and right. And the other option is touch up my appearance. So if you want, want to turn it off, it just softens the picture. So, you know, felt cute, might turn it off later. And that's where all you can find all of that. Now, you can also get to some additional audio settings here while you're in the video settings and quite a few other settings. They're all grouped by category or directly from the up arrow button. So you can go to audio settings that way. Now, there is also the option for a virtual background, and so you can choose any of these. You can choose a picture if you want to. I've uploaded this one, or you can use some of the defaults. I'm a science teacher, so of course I would want to have Jupiter there. The whole point of that is if you don't want people to see uh, my cat sleeping back there or the vacuum cleaner, if I don't want you to see my vacuum, I could always just put a virtual background up so you can just see me. Uh, and so that's one of your options there. So aside from that, we can also look at some of the screen sharing options. One of the things that uh, I find the most frustrating with screen sharing is when someone else shares their screen, uh, pretty often it defaults to taking Zoom and making it full screen. So 
if you go back into video settings, um, in your sharing screen options, the first thing there is enter full screen when a participant shares a screen. So usually that's checked. I actually turn that off so it doesn't immediately go full screen as soon as somebody shares. Now, the other sharing options, if you're sharing your screen, the host has to allow you to do this, but you can share something if you want to show it to your teacher. And so you'd choose any one of these options. You can play around with the different options, so you can sh actually share from your iPhone or your iPad or share a specific window if you're in a class and you need to show your teacher something, so those are all there. There's also the participant window, which I actually would usually turn on right at the beginning of a class, and the chat window, I usually turn those, or any time I'm entering a Zoom, when, Zoom session, I usually turn those on right away because I just think that they're very useful. So in your participants window, you're gonna see basically everybody in the meeting and uh, you can mute yourself or unmute yourself from there as well. Now in the chat window, there's really not much to look at other than the fact that you always wanna make sure you're messaging the correct person. So it defaults to everyone. Now you can also just message the teacher or the host of the meeting or depending on the settings, sometimes you can message other people in the, in the Zoom. Now, the last part that I have here is nonverbal feedback and meeting reactions. So it's actually, sometimes I'll even make this mistake and call these reactions. Really reactions in Zoom are down here. And so when you do a reaction, uh, maybe something said, somebody said something I liked and I give them a thumbs up. Now the reactions will stay on your screen for about 10 seconds or so and then they'll eventually disappear. So you don't have to turn off the reaction, it just goes away after a while. Now the nonverbal feedback could be that your teacher asks you a yes or no question Maybe you have a question of your own and you want to raise your hand. So when you click raise hand, you notice up at the top up there next to my name, it'll show that hand raised. And I can change the reaction, but the only way to really get it to go away is by clicking the same one again. So if I have no as my reaction currently, I can click no again and it turns it off. There are a few more over here, like a coffee cup, like you need a break, or there's the clock, uh, I'm away from the computer. Uh, clap again, similar to reactions. So you can play around those if you'd like to. So that's a quick overview of a lot of the Zoom features we've seen that uh, are kind of important. So I hope that that was helpful. We look forward to seeing you at the beginning of the school year, and thank you for listening.